Welcome back everyone, Chris from Waves and Trails here. Today we're going to talk about the GoFish Cam. Now, I've had this for a couple months, and at first I really, really wanted to love it. I absolutely really wanted to love it, but there were things that I didn't quite like about it, and it was actually not the camera, it was more or less applying it to the proper scenarios, and today we're going to talk about it a little bit. So here's the GoFish Cam. You can see it's pretty sturdy construction. We have a heavy duty metal, I don't say rod system that holds it up. We have fins to make sure that it's stable in the water. It's actually three pieces. The back part unscrews where you can reach the controls and you have the red record button, the black kind of, you can see the Wi-Fi button, and you have a switch for the light on, it turns on, that's the bright light. Then you have a switch all the way to the right without the light. Three buttons, pretty simple use. At first I wasn't impressed with, with, with the video, but it wasn't the camera's fault, it was more the situation I put the camera in. Um, we'll go over some things that I really think that there should be an improvement on, on, on this camera, but overall I think it's a great camera. You can see from the footage that we're going to have, there's, there's certain limitations, especially with water clarity. I feel that anything in excess of five feet in mediocre water clarity you're not going to see. It really picks up the contrast, the the water saturation color that you can see in this video. This is before I added any type of um, color correction and then subsequently you can see with color correction kind of bringing down those green mid-tones that it makes a heck of a difference in, in terms of the video footage. Another weakness in this camera that I think is a big weakness is the lens itself is plastic. This protective covering is plastic and it's kind of a soft plastic. It scratches really easily. You don't want to get in there with any type of brush. You don't want to use any any type of cloth. You really just want to rinse it off and, and let it be. Otherwise, that'll scuff up really easily. Granted, the lens cap itself comes off and you can change out these lenses themselves but then you're without a camera until you actually get the lenses in. And it's not something that uh, is, is readily available on the website from what I saw. Other than that, I think it's a solid camera. It's able to shoot in 1080-60, 1080-30, and 720-30. All that controls are through the red button itself. You can also hook it up Wi-Fi to the phone. Underwater, Wi-Fi does not work. You would have to use the included float. When you, when you get the camera, it comes with a float and it simply goes, get it right the first time, it simply goes through as such so that the back end of the camera sticks to the top of the float. And you can see it, it sits in there real snug so there's no risk of losing the float or the camera. And then that way you can go ahead and have a bird's eye view whatever you're fishing. In addition, we have access to the Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi is about 70 feet. I haven't used it yet. I think it would be a good, uh, good little cheat or hack for steelhead in some clear water, but I have not used the float itself. And like I said, it's, it's not easy to get in and out of there. The camera itself weighs about three ounces, so it's, it's, it's got a little bit of heft to it. Nothing too crazy. It doesn't, it doesn't affect the the baits while trolling it does in fact a presentation of something inline that say I use for lean cod or a rockfish. One thing I have noticed, and you can see in the video, I use this size swivel while trolling for salmon on the front. This part, this about an inch, inch and a quarter, yeah, it's about the middle. So this length of swivel doesn't get into the, the scene of the camera but the remainder half does of, of that little piece. So about this much. So for the first inch, it doesn't get into the, into the view of the camera, but if you use, let's say this is about a 70 pound, inch and a half swivel in length, maybe two inches in length, you'll get a part of that. So I, what I think is a good tip is to run maybe a small split, split ring such as this and a small stainless steel barrel swivel or something with bearings to give it that nice smooth rotation. Um, overall, it's a, it's a good camera. It's, it's not a great camera in, in, in my, my humble opinion, but I've only used it about four times since I've gotten it. I think it's a good camera. It's solidly built. I mean, this is, 
this is pretty pretty bulletproof I don't worry about it being banged up I'm kind of concerned with the plastic lens cover that can be easily scratched let's say if you go down in a reef or something and you bang it off the reef I mean that can scratch the water will fill up the scratches and kind of not tran you know transfer over onto video because you don't have the air to the plastic but instead you're ha actually having the water fill in the scratches so they that might not be an issue I don't know I haven't really put it through its paces in that regard I don't have any um, fear of losing the camera due to its construction I mean this is pretty solid pretty thick wiring on it um, my only concern is when I throw in the water is ensuring that I tighten it completely before throwing in there sometimes I throw in the water I'm like oh my god did I actually tighten this but it's got multiple seals in here we have a black o-ring we have a white o-ring we have an additional looks like a polyurethane seal in there I don't know if you can see that so that sits all the way in the back and you can either control it through Wi-Fi before you send it in so you turn it on hit the Wi-Fi get your phone out send it in or what I usually do is just unscrew it, set it to record, record at the settings that you want to record, tighten it back up, and give it a full send. Um, I've not cast at great distance with it. I've only used it for salmon trolling, for halibut trolling, a little bit of rockfish, and then salmon trolling. What I think this camera is, does great is trolling, is actually doing that suspended trolling, for example, for trout, or for salmon, do that suspended trolling, have the line, small barrel swivel, I mean, small um, split ring, small barrel swivel, and then your leader. Foot and a half to three feet leader length, depending on the water clarity, is gonna be a good happy medium to get the footage that you want, just to see the fish come up, to see your bait and how it, it uh, performs in the water column. Overall, I think it's a good buy. I think it's, it's good in terms of construction, Little caveats here and there. Like I said, I'm concerned about the screen. I always, I never leave it with any hardware in the front. I always put it in an included little nifty bag. I always keep it with any hardware, only in the in the back. No hardware ever in the front because, like I said, that scratches easily. It actually came to me. The original one came to me scratched up. And you can see in the footage that um, it produces a good image. It it it, cap it has a little microphone. It captures a little bit of sound. It produces a good image. It'll run until the the memory card is full, or the battery dies, obviously. So, also, it only creates one minute segment videos. So every minute it stops, creates a new video file, which can be frustrating, but also it breaks it up, so you're not gonna go through, searching through an hour or two hours with the video. It, it, it really kind of makes it a little easier. That said, those one minute clips, have about a two second delay, a second half to two second delay. So it's not instantaneous. It's not instantaneous. You, you could possibly lose footage depending on, on the timing of the situation, excuse me. You could, you could possibly lose footage depending on the timing of the situation because you have that two second delay and the one second to two second delay. It's a good buy. If, if you're interested in seeing what your baits do or seeing the action in the water, it's, it's a solid built camera. I'm not worried about it performing underwater. The only issue that I have personally is this, this lens. This feels a little little weak. So if you're gonna do any type of bottom fishing where you're bouncing off the bottom, make sure you're paying attention to your depth and where that lure or bait is and making sure that the camera itself doesn't come in contact with any of the bottom structure. But for, for good, clear water, I think it's a solid camera. I think it's a good buy. I think I spent about $200 on this. You can check out some of the footage now to see what I've done thus far at salmon trolling with it.
Thanks again, guys, for watching. Once again, this is Chris from Waves and Trails. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, click over here to see more, and I'll see you guys next time.